Despite encouraging viewers not to pay attention to the person's race and determining whether or not they may be a terrorist, almost all the scenarios in the clip proceed to portray white people as the most likely terrorists. Bizarrely, nearly every single one of the patriotic Americans who reports on their fellow citizens is either black, Asian, or Arab. Imagine if the video portrayed every terrorist as an Arab and every patriotic snoop as white. There'd be an outcry, and rightly so. But this strange reversal must have been deliberate on the part of the DHS. But why? Is this merely political correctness taken to an extreme, or is it something deeper at work? And then he goes with the proof that it's absolutely what's been going on behind the scenes. So they're now shifting it on the American people. DHS checkpoints, Homeland Security, uh, TSA running wild. This is the total takeover. And it's meant to make all of us not trust each other and divide and conquer and only trust the nanny state. Don't trust other Walmart shoppers. The telescreens say only trust Big Sis, who, of course, helped get the underwear bomber on the plane on record and who helped ship the guns into Mexico and to blame the Second Amendment. But she's good, though. Continuing here. Um, this has to do with the color of a person's skin and everything to do. This has little to do with the color of a person's skin and everything to do with the fact that white middle-class Americans are the biggest roadblock when it comes to big cis expanding its control over every facet of society. Well, now they're just tackling the big egg. It's plain to see that very little of the budget for this video went towards paying for decent actors, but perhaps it's fitting that the participants were about as believable as Santa and his elves, because the notion that terrorists are hovering around every underground parking lot waiting to blow up federal buildings is demonstrably false. Actually, when Jane Graham up in the HUD building saw McVeigh and other feds planting bombs and warned people, they didn't want to hear about it <laughs> in Oklahoma City. As Ohio University John Mueller has documented the likelihood of actually being a victim of terrorism is infinitesimally small and only highlights how much threats are hyperbolically exaggerated for political purposes. Figures collected by Mueller clearly show that Americans are just as likely to be killed by lightning strikes, accidents, uh, by running into deer, or severe allergic reactions to peanuts. But the facts don't matter for a federal agency whose primary function is to manufacture fear, as former head of Homeland Security Governor Ridge admitted he was ordered to do. See, we have all the facts here. Uh, to keep Americans under control and submissive to the fact that their economic futures and their constitutional rights are being torn to shreds by their own government while it points to a contrived outside threat as a convenient distraction. At its core, the video was filled with scenes of ordinary citizens spying on each other and alerting the authorities to their compatriots, suspicious deeds, writes Simon Black. In my favorite scene, a woman calls the police after snooping over the shoulder of a young man typing away on a smartphone. Black notes that such videos are solely aimed at reinforcing ignorance, hate, and fear for those who still live in darkness and are completely unaware of the real agenda behind Homeland Security's See Something, Say Something charade. By the way, I'm going to call Watson during the break and during that part about the feds issuing terror alerts to create artificial fear and make you love them and not love your neighbor. I'm going to have him add a link to Ridge admitting that. I think we need to even document that more for folks. No matter where you look, from East Germany to Communist Russia to Nazi Germany, historically governments who encourage their own citizens to report on each other do so not out of a genuine safety concerns or presumed benefits to security, but in order to create an authoritarian police state that coerces the people into policing each other's behavior and thoughts and to create a big chilling effect as well. I better not speak out about freedom, you know, my... Uh, my neighbor will call Homeland Security on me. Well, let them. They're the terrorist anyways. Let's just get it out in the open. We all know you blew up the towers, you murdering military-industrial complex banker-owned scum. As Robert Gelanti of Florida State University has highlighted, Germans under Hitler denounced their neighbors and friends not because they genuinely believed them to be a security threat, but because they expected to selfishly benefit from doing so, both financially and socially and psychologically, via a Pavlovian need to be rewarded by their masters for their obedience. And that's how now you hear ads about report if your boss is pirating software. Report if your neighbor's spanking their kid was not even legal. Uh, report people uh, who are homeschooling. All of this is about getting social reward or feeling like you've been patted on the head. In fact, I didn't get into it, but will you guys re-pull the study from yesterday? Big international 
and major U.S. university uh, study and concert that found that people will say a barn door is blue if authority figures tell them it's blue, even if the barn door is red. And uh, that's what uh, you know, they have different TV shows illustrating this, how peer pressure works. And so people relish calling and tattling on their neighbors. They get a thrill like the authority loves them. Any free society abhors telling on somebody even if what somebody's doing is wrong. In the old days, you would just take care of it yourself. I mean, you know, only the very worst stuff would be reported because people knew how dangerous a snitch society was. And uh, it goes on uh, through the rest of this. I mean, this is just classical tyranny. Uh, let's go ahead and start getting into the rest of the video as I analyze it here. PrisonPlanet.tv viewers can see it, but uh, we're here critiquing uh, this taxpayer paid for uh, propaganda. We have the video posted up at Infowars.com in our articles. Uh, let, let's continue. Uh, you got the black guy calling in the evil white people, uh, and then it cuts to a bunch of shots of news articles of white terrorists in every case, mentally ill provocateurs or purely staged government ops like McVeigh. It, it has animated blue eyes shining. Oh my gosh, the white devil's going to get to you. point this out. Uh, you've got one of the federal and local uh, top police analysts uh, predicting future terror threats, Mr. Farrell, over in England, when he found out it was the government behind 7-7, and he said the new threat, and he, he brought up that you know, other cases of where it was admitted with the British government had staged terror, they fired him. So see, all they want is little dumbed-down control freaks. Work. I I've tried on air to call Homeland Security to report terror over and over again, and the numbers don't work or nobody answers. It's all fake. It's all fake. They use the NSA to spy on people, so in case you find out the government's about to stage a terror attack, or a corporation is, to get naked body scanners in, or whatever the case is, so they can use NSA spying to make sure police don't get alerted and that they can go forward with the bombing. Of course, the feds have been caught over and over again in some DMVs handing out 20, 30,000 fake IDs to illegals. I mean, every crime they're talking about here is the feds. They are the drug dealing, murdering scumbags that work for foreign banks. They're getting ready to blow more stuff up. Up on Infowars.com, Paul Watson has shot a special report. He's a white Al-Qaeda operative because he has blue eyes. A headline, Big Sis Story Goes Viral. Headline, DHS video characterizes white Americans as most likely terrorists. We're going to open the phones up coming up to the balance of the hour specifically on this story. And I've got some other uh, important news dealing with the UN's green helmets to invade countries for environmental crimes uh, coming up. But the toll-free number to join us on this Thursday edition is 800-259-9231. Now, I don't screen your calls, but every week or two, I'll have a time when I say I want callers who want to talk about this to have a chance to call in. I don't care what color you are. Uh, I'm sure Arabs and Muslims are tired of being stereotyped as, as being terrorists. And, well, now it's whitey. So the toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. We'll get you up and on the air coming up in the next couple segments. In fact, we'll go to your calls right after the break. But this all coincides with pell-mell fear-mongering that domestic terrorists are the number one threat, militias and al-Qaeda. They mix them together. Uh, folks, the redneck militias absolutely hate al-Qaeda. That's like claiming that... Uh, that, uh, you know, Beelzebub's working with Jesus. I mean, I mean, this is, this is just so ridiculous, or that night is day. But that's what they do in the training manuals. Now they're going public. All the major ROTC training, the scout explorers, what do they train in college and in middle school? And all these programs, kill the militias, kill the gun owners, kill the disgruntled veteran. You want me to show you the New York Times article? I can show you a bunch of others. Hey, let, let's put that up. First line of the article. Uh, Explorer scouts trained to take on terrorists. And then the first line is, oh, they trained to take on disgruntled Iraq war vets. And then it shows the photos of them with paintball killing the veterans. If you got a bird dog, you train it to go after quail, or you train it to go after pick up the dove or the duck. If you got a coon hound, you train it to go tree a coon. The military and the police are trained to take on the veterans. And we've got the training manuals from every stinking federal agency. ATF, FBI, 
federal marshals, state police, Homeland Security master documents. I've published them all. Okay? I've tried over and over again to call dozens of numbers on air. You've seen me. They don't answer the hotlines. It's all fake. It's all fake. There it is. Scouts trained to fight terrorists and more. And you scroll down, first paragraph. Mm, you can look at the dozens. They've got like 20 something photos in the gallery. Ten minutes into an errant mayhem in his town near the Mexican border, a gunman, a disgruntled Iraq war veteran, has already taken two people hostage. See, see, see. It's casting the vets as, as, as killing people. He's already taken out two people. One slumped in his desk, the other covered in blood. It doesn't matter. The scouts go in and take out that Iraq war veteran scum. I mean, this is how they do it. I've been to the urban warfare drills for 16 years and watched them with Boy Scouts. This is in Police Day 2000, shot in 1998 in Hebron, Maryland where the police chief comes over with Marines with machine guns, with heavy guns, and says, turn your camera off, you're not taping it. Well, they had another camera guy who did get it on tape. It was what looked like 10 to 12-year-old groups uh, uh, in, the, in little white T-shirts, they could be identified, uh, of Boy Scouts working with the Marines to come out and tell them what guns were in Mommy and Daddy's house. Oh, this was confirmed. Now, you know why I'm a little freaked out Know the government's evil was going to stage terror attacks before 9-11. Because in all their RAND Corporation public documents, they said they would use terror to destroy the republic, to destroy our freedoms, to destroy the Bill of Rights and Constitution. And they are now pell-mell, hyping 24-7 that the terrorists are about to hit everywhere. Get ready. Yeah, they're going to hit right when the banks are robbing everybody, so you'll still put your flag outside and go grovel to government and tattle on your neighbors. What would a normal American do if they went to urban warfare drills and watched young children training to report on their parents? You would get upset. I remember two years ago uh, up in uh, Arcadia, Iowa, it was in the newspaper that the local gun shop is going to practice being shut down and raided. There will then be door-to-door -door gun confiscation in the town of 700, and they've all agreed to take part. School children will be helping. And I came out and said it was a gun confiscation drill, and the paper freaked out on me and said the town's gotten thousands of calls, the people are coming here. Yes, it was going to be a gun confiscation drill, but for Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the government just got caught shipping guns into Mexico to blame it on the Second Amendment red-handed, and they don't even care. They're still going ahead with the false flag. It'd be like if they caught the feds that day red-handed at Oklahoma City. Uh, and you know there's been more deaths from the 30-something thousand guns they shipped than what died, 168 or whatever it was uh, at, at Oklahoma City. It'd be like catching them red-handed there. And now we catch the feds all over the country. Miami and Chicago, everywhere, selling guns to at low prices, fully auto, you name it, grenade launchers, whatever you need, directly to the drug gangs who are in their employ to knock out the other drug gangs. It's going on nationwide. It's not just Mexico. Of course, the feds run the $500 billion in narcotics money. Do you think some local zit-faced crack dealer is laundering that money? $500 billion a year. And then the hundreds of billions out of the private prisons with the slave labor working for 25 cents an hour displacing all of our jobs. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. It's 100% proven. Now, they're getting all their little spies primed, all their little minions that if you see, you see somebody leave the bag, you know, on a bench while they go throw something in the trash to panic and start screaming and, Homeland Security, it's a white guy, put that bag down. That's why now every major city under federal grants is buying multi-million dollar robots. Austin just got two of them. What was it, Lockheed Martin, the last company? All that, or was it North at Grumman in Austin? And then now they got to have something happen, so they find a cardboard box on the side of I-35, blows out of somebody's car, an old mattress. The robot goes up every week. They shot down the highway, the helicopters, and then they blow up the thing claiming they're protecting you, but really it's to create an explosion at a Pavlovian level that that was a bomb. And they have drills and blow up buses and cars unannounced and say a day later it was just a drill to create the fear. Ah, did you hear downtown Chicago? A bus blew up today. You, you call your family. Honey, get home. They just blew up a bus a day later. It was a drill.